Hi! Um, I have made this video every year for as long as I've been on booktube, um, which is now four years. That's, that's bonkers. Four years is a long time. So, uh, welcome to my top 10 books of 2020. I, this year has been, I mean, y'all know, y'all know how this year's been. So, I have found myself escaping into narrative even more than usual. Um, I actually, at, I'm filming this, well, it's still November, but <laughs> at this point I've read 127 books, which for me is a record by a significant margin. And you know, sometimes that's just what you need. Sometimes you just need a little bit of escapism. Ain't nothing wrong with a little, little hiding away. <laughs> so these are a large combo of things. Um, we've got a little nonfiction. We've got some stuff that's more of like a, I don't even, some of these, I, would, I don't know what genre I'd classify them as, but this is, I think, the most mixed year I've ever had. So let's get started. These are in no particular order because I just feel like picking a favorite book is like picking a favorite child. You just can't do it. Um, so the first book I want to talk about is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, this book, the way that Machado does her prose is just genuinely like, the best way I can describe it is I got a nice new mattress. Um, because I haven't had like a new mattress since I was like eight um, when I moved here and when the first time I laid down on it I just felt it like myself sink into it and it like supported me in all the right places but also like was soft and like giving and I know this is dreadfully dramatic but that is what reading in the dream house felt like um, trigger warning for abuse um, and mental illness but this tells the story of queer domestic abuse in a way that I think a lot of people are afraid to. Um, and I appreciate the bravery and the craft that went into this book, for sure. Next, um, I read The Marrow Thieves by Sherry Dimeline. Um, I read this for my sci-fi class um, earlier this year, and that it is based on this fascinating concept where uh, indigenous peoples are the only people left on earth because of like climate change and climate death uh, that have the capability to dream um, so they are people are chasing in the indigenous peoples and trying to steal their bone marrow because the ability to dream is like tied up in that and I just the concept of it is one just so interesting like fascinating and also this you so seldom, at least I do, and I, this is something I need to work on more. Sorry, I think I just pulled a poster down. Um, you, I at least very seldom read from indigenous um, points of views and authors, and um, editing Catherine will confirm or deny if this is a um, own voices book, like here. But she, this book won um, a huge Canadian award that I can't recall the name of right now, um, but I had never heard of it until my sci-fi class, so if you haven't picked it up, um, I do recommend reading it for sure. Uh, next, I want to talk about The Likeness by Tana French. My dear friend um, loves Tana French and the Dublin Murder Squad series, so of course, like any good friend, I had to pick them up. This book just is the most lovely combination of murder, mystery, um, and Irish accents. Um, I listened to the audiobook with uh, the narrator having an Irish accent, and I can 100% say that that, like, radically improved my experience. <laughs> um, this is very much like the secret history to me, but it felt a little more... I don't know. It's got... it's the secret history, but less American, because it's Irish. I don't know. That's dumb, Catherine. Um, but if you enjoyed the secret history at all, then you will love this book. Next, I want to talk about um, The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi. Um, this is Six of Crows vibes with a lot of neurodivergent um, characters in it. And it just hits all the right buttons. It's got romance. It's got friendship. It's got, like, exactly what you need. It's set in Paris, and you know me. Um, this book just is like, I don't know, this 
this year I really like delved out into I really am actively trying to read more people of color um and I just that is something that I've just failed so miserably at in the past um that you know it's like a whole thing but I 100% recommend if you enjoyed the six of crows at all kind of like the same way that the likeness is very much equivalent to the secret history um the gilded wolves is very similar to six of crows so if you like one you'll most likely like the other uh next jane eyre by charlotte bronte i can't believe i made it through 21 years of life without reading um jane eyre i don't know what i was waiting for <laughs> there's a lot of weird just mr rochester's just such a freak so I, it just i just can't i can't articulate to you i don't know if you'll like it or not because at some on some le deep level i'm not sure if i like it or not um i loved jane and i loved like the craft and the artistry and the writing but sometimes the stuff that happens I'm like wow y'all are really out there wild and huh um, <laughs> um this is a staple classic like British literature book and I just loved the some of the lines are just the kind that you just want to like roll around in like like in like a nice pile of leaves but like a comforting pile of leaves you know I'm mixing my metaphors all over the place. I'm so sorry. Next, um, this is unlike any book that I've ever had on my like top 10 list before, but Buffy the Vampire Slayer by um, Jason Rickluck. I'm sorry if I butchered that name, which I most likely did. Um, yes, this is a children's picture book, um, but also, I don't know, the something about the art style of this was just very, just so fun. It was really cutesy and nice. As of late, I've been absolutely obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, thanks to the same friend who got me into the Devil and Murder Squad. And this was just such a sweet, a sweet little read that I loved the art of it. I loved the illustrations, which are synonyms. Taking a radical turn, um, <laughs> Next is The Soul of a Man Under Socialism by Oscar Wilde. <laughs> yes, uh, we went from children's book to socialist um, pamphlet, but this book just, I had never really read um, anything that, of Oscar Wilde that wasn't the picture of Dorian Gray. So reading this political piece, um, I feel like so frequently we forget the depths and complexities of historical figures and authors and Oscar Wilde is one of those people who we like associate certain things with him and we forget the the layers of the layers of him and this just does socialism like describes socialism and the way that humanity needs it in such a beautiful way and in such an accessible way you don't have to be a socialist to read this um i just i honestly just really recommend it if you just like good writing but also if you are a socialist i do really recommend it next uh i am not done with this book yet but i already know it's going to be one of my favorites um and that is too much and never enough by mary l trump yes i said it um my libby loan just came through uh i'm reading it and you know as an american seeing the the complexities and depths of the Trump family, you know, and understanding the backstory of who is our current but soon to be ex president. Um, it's just been really jarring. Um, can you imagine how <laughs> I mean, obviously, they don't have Thanksgiving together, but can you imagine if they did? That'd be so awkward, like sitting down at the table and like, ooh, Mary, how are your book sales for the, the family tell all going? This book is very, I mean, if you want to read it, then you'll read it, but um, honestly, it's quite sad on many, in many ways, very sad. I don't know if I recommend it, but I am enjoying it as much as you can enjoy um, a book about the childhood and upbringing and like mental faculties of an autocratic dictator who is in the process of ruining your country's democracy. <laughs> uh, next, ooh, this is a really good one, um, Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Um, I feel like, 
I know that Margaret Rogerson's been in my top 10 before, and that's because I just think that the way she does her little, there, she just does such, they're so, her books are so fun. They encapsulate such a fun fantasy romance um, narrative into like one fun little package. And I keep saying fun because that's really what it is. It really just does feel very, it's super entertaining. It's super heartwarming. Um, this one is about a badass librarian um, and it just, you know, if you haven't read Margaret Rogerson and you like fantasy or you like feeling happy, then I cannot recommend enough that you go out there and look for either A Sorcery of Thorns or An Enchantment of Ravens. Um, I can't tell you which one's my favorite because I love them both equally, but for different reasons. So give them both a try and see if you like them. Finally, um, I'm sure y'all know a Little Women um, movie came out at the end of last year and that was a whole year ago, wow. And I wanted to have this reread done um, before the movie came out, but clearly that didn't happen. Um, Little Women was my favorite book as a kid. I just loved Jo as just, oh, I have a million and one feelings about the family, the March family and Lori and the relationships and the friendships, romances and family structures that are crafted in this narrative. Um, there's a reason that it is a classic and that is because it just takes, I feel like I keep saying the human experience, um, it takes it and it just balls it up into a fun little like, fun little soup that you can just like sip at fun little intervals and it's very warm and it warms your whole body, it's super nice. Um, uh, it is chunky, it did take me a long while to finish this reread, I think that might have been also because like, you know, end of the world. Um, this is like the word, the word cloud series, um, word, word cloud classics copy and bro, it's so nice. She's real cute. This is one of my prized possessions. So, um, that was my top 10 books of 2020. Um, I hope that you got at least one good recommendation out of this and I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a good reading year. Let me know what your favorite books were of this year down below how, um, 2020 as a year impacted your reading, if it like made you read more, if it made you read less, if your reading stayed the same. Um, let me know down below because I'm really interested. Um, like, comment, subscribe. See you very soon. Bye.